I tried spinning up my own auth provider and let me tell you, it was a huge mistake. At first I thought, hey, it's just login and sign up. How hard could it be? A user's table, a password hash, a jot or two, and done. The deeper I went, the more I realized I was opening a Pandora's box. Password resets, email verification, OAuth, multi-factor authentication, SAML, SCIM, session management, and a lot more. Suddenly, I wasn't building my app anymore. I was trying to become an auth company. So in this specific video, I'll walk you through the whole thing. How I rolled up my own auth, things that went wrong, the lessons I learned along the way, the auth concepts you actually need to know if you're going to roll up your own auth, and how I eventually migrated off my DIY setup to Clerk, and then eventually to WorkOS, which is what I'm planning to use now. So if you're thinking of rolling off your own auth, or you're stuck with something that doesn't scale, please stick around because this might just save you weeks or even months. So let's dive in. So here's a real question that you need to ask yourself or decide for your company or what's right for your app. Should I take full control of managing my users or trust a well-established provider to handle that for me? Do you want to manage your users or do you want someone else to take care of that for you? Now this is a question I want you to keep answering throughout the video as I walk you through the different options that I went for and the decisions that I had to make and what I went with. Because just because I went for a specific path doesn't mean it's right for you. Pick what's right for you and for your application. There are a few challenges if you roll up your own auth. And here's the part that no one tells you. It's not just about features, it's about security. Security of your user's identity, such as their email address, their passwords, whatever information that they're sharing with you. There are a few things you need to be mindful of when you're rolling up your own auth. First one is password hashing. If you pick the wrong algorithm, you are exposed. So you need to know which one to pick. So you need to be aware of that. Session management. It's really easy to screw that up and it's really hard to debug. Users can stay logged in forever or worse, anyone can hijack their session. You don't really want that. CSRF, course, brute force protection, each of these could be an entire project. And if you don't know what these terms are, I'll link it down below. The auth guide that you could easily just download if you choose to roll up your own auth or a few lessons that I've shared in this video as well. So take a look at that in the description below. Then compliance. Now, if you are storing personal data, you are already on the hook. You have to make sure that you are compliant with all the rules that exist in every country and so on. There is GDPR, there is HIPAA, there is SOC2. And that's when it really hit me. Security isn't just a side project. It isn't just a cool thing that I could just ask AI to whip it out, wipe code it or whatever. It's an entire company. And I did not want to build an auth company. All I wanted to know was, can my users securely log in? If they're logged in, cool. Are they pro users? Cool. Then I'm going to expose them to my course platform, for example, that I build on top of Next.js. Or if I'm creating any other product for my SaaS, with the free tier, I just want to give them something for free for the next seven days. Again, I'm going to check their credentials for that. That's all I want to care about when I'm building my app. I want to focus on growing my users, growing my platform. I want to focus on growing my next year's course that I recently launched. I really don't want to think too much about auth. I want to really delegate that specific responsibility to someone else. However, I, it took me a while until I came to this realization. At first, I wanted full control because I'm a developer. And now with AI, I have more power. So I decided to not give into a company or pay for it. Now, Lucia is an open source project that provides resources on for implementing authentication using JavaScript and TypeScript. It in fact uses session whenever they want to persist state across requests. So for sign-in state, you would create a session and so on. It would do all the complex part for you, but you would still manage your users. It's an awesome open source project. So I actually use Lucia Auth and I loved it. It has a really clean API. It fit nicely into my stack. It got more control than a hosted provider. And I also covered it on my channel on Lucia Auth as well. I loved it so much. But the maintainer stopped maintaining it. And that's the risk you take with libraries. I'm incredibly thankful for all the work that goes into maintaining an open source library. But I also know that it's a lot of work. So when the support ends, you're stuck holding the bag patching security issues, dealing with bugs, migrating everything with little notice, and that's a huge risk. So when that happened, I was still building my custom course platform on top of Next.js as I was launching my Next.js course, and that was a wake-up call. Auth isn't static, standards evolve, 
security requirements tied in and I did not want my business to depend on whether one maintainer or a few maintainers had the time to maintain a library. I wanted a, a bit more reliable solution because there were thousands of users on my wait list for the next year's course. In fact, even for my SaaS, people are literally giving me their credit card information. I did not want to take that lightly. So that was a wake up call for me. And before you come at me in the comments and be like, why not just use better auth? Well, I know what you're thinking, but at the time better auth wasn't as popular as it is now. Better auth is great. It is the most comprehensive authentication framework for TypeScript. It gives you the primitives, sign up, login, authentication, it's framework agnostic, but you're still responsible for running all of it. Servers, scaling, security patches. And when an enterprise asks for SAML or SEIM, you are building that on your own. Now, I'm not talking about just a startup project where I want to add auth. I'm talking about a platform that has thousands of users, which I do for my SaaS as well as for my courses. So if you want to use better auth, it's a great solution. If you want to control, like I said, and a question that I asked you earlier, do you want to take full control of managing your users or trust a well-established provider to handle that form? That's great. Go for better auth if you like. But for me, that's when I truly realized that I don't want to manage all my user data. It's a lot at risk. There's a huge security risk and there's a lot that goes in the background to make sure that it's fully secure. And that's where WorkOS co comes in play. Now, what is WorkOS? WorkOS is a dev first auth and enterprise ready identity platform. It gives you all the things that are painful to build yourself, like SAML, single sign-on, SCIM, directory sync, feature flags, role-based access, an admin portal, audit logs, and a lot more. WorkOS also provides something called as AuthKit, which is honestly amazing because it's built on top of Radix, the same library that powers Shatsy and UI components. So the UI is fully customizable and it feels like it's part of your brand from day So instead of duct taping features or waiting months to build enterprise auth yourself, I'm thinking ahead because WorkOS plugs in. It is in fact trusted by reputed companies like OpenAI, Vercel, Cursor, Indeed, Bolt, and Loom, and so on. So I know that I can trust them blindly because of all these companies that are trusting them. And for me, it just meant that I could simply focus on writing my business logic and focusing on growing my app, making money off of it. Now, this video is sponsored by WorkOS, but I was the one who reached out to them for this as I wanted to create this specific video and walk y'all through the journey of how I went about spinning up my own auth and eventually going to WorkOS. So thank you WorkOS for sponsoring this video, but there is more. Before going with WorkOS, I in fact went with Clerk. Honestly, Clerk was great when I got started. It's easy to drop in, has nice UI components, and it just works. But as my modern full stack next JS course started to grow, I hit the wall. I needed deep customization since WorkOS is built on top of Radix, the same foundation that Shatsian uses. I use a lot of Shatsian components as well, I could design everything easily exactly how I want it. WorkOS also has feature flags. So for example, if we go to the dashboard and we go to feature flags, then we could just create a feature flag. So I could just hide or show specific UI depending on the user because users are also in here. So only showing, for example, features to pro users that I need or hide and show specific features or roll out new features seamlessly. Maybe I want to roll out pro features to the pro users versus to the free users and so on. I could do that easily because feature flags is fully baked in. That's the event it also came to pricing. Now with Clerk, as you scale, it was harder for me to predict what the pricing was going to be like. But with WorkOS, you only pay for enterprise features that help close customers, things like SSO or SCIM. So that made my math really simple because again, I don't want those SSO features right now. I'm not an enterprise. I sit in the middle. WorkOS was a really good fit. Now, this is a guide that I use if you want to migrate off of Clerk and into WorkOS. For example, Clerk does allow you to export user data directly from their API 
but you could also just simply go to the dashboard. This is the cloud dashboard. If I go to settings, go all the way to the bottom, I could just easily click on export all users and clerk is going to make those available and we could just download it. Now this is really awesome on clerk's part because I could just download my users. I'm not fully tied into it. So I just, I was able to download it and then WorkOS gives us this GitHub repo and as well as a WorkOS APIs to then insert those users into WorkOS by going to this GitHub repository over here, it, there's a command line tool where you give your WorkOS secret key run this specific command for migrating the clerk users and then pass in the user export that you just downloaded from clerk now if you go back here it will be available in a second that's exactly what you provide in instead of example input.json once it's able to do that then it, ha it will migrate successfully into work os we would also use the work os apis for doing so i just found the first one really easy because the github code was really simple and lastly you just want to be mindful of a few things in case there's a user with multiple email addresses clerk separates them with a the pipe symbol there's no way which to know which email is the primary one from the export alone you may want to keep that in mind so i check that if this specific email has a record in stripe then i'm just going to log them in it doesn't matter what other alternative email address exists you could also import passwords from clerk as well and here's how you could do so and you can also migrate the social auth user because if you have users who previously signed in through clerk using a social auth provider such as google or microsoft those users can continue to sign in after you have migrated you can check out this specific page the integration page to do so again clerk supports sms work os doesn't so you want to keep that in mind too but overall, I, I don't personally care about SMS. I only mainly stick to email addresses. But if you do care about that, that's something you want to keep in mind. Overall, the process was relatively simple. I love that Clerk allowed me to just migrate it off of Clerk. But also moving on to WorkOS was just relatively simple. So here's what I learned. If you're rolling up your own auth, it's fun for a weekend, but liability in production. Now, if you are okay with taking full control of managing your users, and if you know what you're doing, then you could use the existing services out there that are quite popular. Now with better auth, it's solid if you want control, but you're still on the hook for enterprise features and security. For me, WorkOS was the answer. It's their first actively maintained. I genuinely love the people that work on WorkOS. It's enterprise ready out of the box and I can finally focus on building my actual product not duct taping another auth provider so what I would say is I just found it better to not reinvent the wheel reinvent the app your customers actually care about so I could focus more on growing my actual app if you're building a SaaS app or trying to integrate auth in your organization save yourself months of pain and take auth seriously now remember auth is literally the entry point to your application if auth breaks, your users will not be able to access all the amazing features that you're building. All right, so now let me know in the comments below. I would love to know if you've tried to roll up your own auth or tried to migrate from one auth provider to the other. I would really love to hear your war stories. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.